Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. Back to the apples from Kirby Rosanes' Worlds Within Worlds, and I thought I would begin working on the apple in the middle today, as well as some of the background. I'm starting with some of the background work today, coming in with the phthalo blue and working up the background around the leaves in apple that I have already colored in. For the background, I thought I would have a sort of halo effect with the outer edges being darker and the area around the central apple lighter. While scrolling through Pinterest, I saw several apples and other pictures worked up in a similar style and liked how it looked. I'll be working on the background for a little while here. I've not been able to edit on my computer and for some reason the app version of the software doesn't allow for more than a 2x speed on the footage. I definitely have the timestamps if you want to skip ahead. I won't feel bad about it, but before you go, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps keep you informed of when I post new videos as well as join in on the color alongs. I have palettes and timestamps in a Patreon post, so go check that out if you want the whole list of colors. And if you missed out on my free coloring page, be sure to check out the cards for some playlists, including the one to get that and color along with me. Subscribing is the best way to learn about more freebies like that.
Onto the apple. I'm coming in with sepia and beginning to block in my shadows. Like other parts of this picture, and even other pictures in this book, the line art kindly provides some of the shadows, while for others I have to infer where they are. So going based on a left side light source, many things on the right will fall in shadow, and of course the stem area will also be in shadow. I take the shadow down the inside of the core as well, since I will be working up that part of the apple at some point too. I try to make the shadow darker further under the overhanging area and gradually lighter the further down I go. With the deep red scarlet, I want to add in a little bit of a base layer over most of the apple to act as a highlight for when I come in with the rest of the colors. I keep it light, just a covering layer. I use the deep red to start really working up the shadows. I'm keeping the layers light as I will build up the color in layers to protect the paper and the sheets underneath. Even with a sheet between pages, I'm pretty sure pressing hard could still damage the pages underneath. I use the pale geranium lake to add in a lighter color closer to where the light would be hitting, as well as between the dark red and the top where a highlight would also form. I am blending the edge of the dark red with the pale geranium lake.
more blending of edges with the light cadmium red. I'm building up the color over the lighter areas too, as this is a pretty light color. I also add in a little over the dark red to make the color even richer with more layers. Back to the dark red and I am building in more layers over the darkest shadowed areas. I'm not pressing harder, just working up the area with repeated layers to build up the color. I also take the color even further to the right as most of that area should also be in shadow and should have received some layers earlier. I add in some dark Naples ochre along the area between the highlight and the blended edge. I want to bring in some of the yellow I used on the other apple, but in the end, this apple has been carved into and will not be as shiny or bright as a still ripening apple. More pale geranium lake to continue working up the lighter side of the apple as well as blend down into the shadows. I remove the tiny little highlight I had on the right side of the apple as it wasn't needed on that side. I do add a light layer over the highlights to knock back the brightness of it. I use the light cadmium red to blend out that pale geranium lake into the dark red below. If you've made it this far and have enjoyed coloring along with me or just watching these apples come to life, I'd appreciate it if you give me a like and subscribe to stay informed of when I post more videos. It really helps me out. Patreon has a short write-up, my palettes, and a list of timestamps, and I've made them available for everyone. If you have any questions or page requests, please leave them below or reach out to me on social media. I put in a list of chapter breaks in the show notes, as well as a list of equipment I like to use. If you use any of my affiliate links, it really helps me out without costing you a thing. I post three times during the week, and subscribing is the best way to stay in the loop. Plus, if I post more Cree coloring pages, you'll be one of the first to know. With the dark red, I go back through and work up the shadows again. I can also go through and darken up the right side even more and remove some of the highlight areas I had left for that side, but realized I didn't need. I add in some ivory over the highlights to blend them together, put down more pigment in the area, and fill in the paper.
A little more pale geranium lake around the edges to smooth out a few rough edges before coming in with more sepia to darken up the shadows. I want them to be darker, so I really work in that sepia. And to really get things dark, I add in a little pine green to the darkest areas to desaturate the color and make it darker. I cover the pine green with more deep red and give the apple a final blend with the deep red to bring everything together a little more. This apple I want it to be a little darker than the other apple since it has been carved into, so it would not be a healthy happy apple. By adding in a light layer of deep red over most of the apple, I toned down the color a little, making the apple seem more dull and lifeless, like an apple that sat on a counter a little too long. I finally come back in with more blue and continue working my way down the side of the page, working up more of the background. I am using light layers and trying to not cover too much area in one pass as I notice that sometimes the color work becomes a little streaky and looks bad. Smaller circles work better than larger ones. I also try to work an area with several light layers to fill in the paper more. But don't feel bad about going back over it and adding in another layer. I do it all the time. A good background takes more than a few layers to get that nice smooth look, and patience really pays off here. I have been trying to work up my backgrounds in sections and spread it out more and it does seem to help prevent background burnout. And that will be it for now. Thanks for joining me today. Let me know below or on social media if you colored along. I'd love to know how you did. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, MeWe, and Patreon. I want to thank you all so much for coming along and joining in with me on this coloring journey. I appreciate all my subscribers and look forward to more of you joining in and coloring along with me. Please like, share, and subscribe to help that happen. Until next time, happy coloring.